Hello and welcome back to our series in magic. Today we'll be discussing the Tree of Life. Tree of Life. Earth. Wind and rain. Water and air. Now, there are some versions of the Tree of Life and styles of the Kabbalah. We will be focusing more on the Hermetic version of the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. The Kabbalah itself means to receive or to accept. To give to receive, mouth to ear. The Tree of Life consists of ten spheres, each sphere representing the unfolding nature of the universe, both on a macrocosmic level and a microcosmic level. And so each of these spheres are linked together with pathways and it is all divided into four separate worlds. For example, the lower world would be represented by the Earth. Here in the tarot we have the Ace of Pentacles. From there, the next, or the first triad, would be represented by the Ace of Swords, Air, Intellect, Mind. Then from there, we go into Higher Consciousness of the Soul, represented by the Ace of Cups and Water, the triad there. And up to the top, we have the Ace of Wands, representing Fire, the Creative Force the top end of consciousness, the creative active principle of light. From the all mind, the all encompassing light, the zealam, the image of the most perfect divinity comes through the spheres from the top down to the dense bottom. Starting in the world of Isaiah, in the kingdom of Malkuth, Earth, referring to both the physical body and to the dense energetic field of consciousness that generates and maintains it. Also known as the Nefesh, the mystics understood that mind and body were not separate entities, but rather that the body was a direct extension of mind to the lowest, most manifest end of mind consciousness spectrum. It's a bit like when you take the medicine, the holographic world seems to disappear. And in order to get it back, we must think to reclaim our body, our physicality, back in this, this dense dimension. And from Malkuth, we go to Yesod. Yesod is the place of imagination, of dreams, of the invisible worlds, of the astral plane, the moon. And from there we have Nezak. Nezak is the emotions, the feeling part of ourselves, represented by the planet Venus. And over here we have Hod, represented by the planet Mercury, representing maths, writing, Creativity, intellect, symbols, and from here, in the center, we have Tipareth, representing beauty, compassion, light, 
sacrifice and redemption. Its planetary sphere is the sun. And from there, we go to Jebera, represented by Mars, severity, judgment, justice, slicing off the BS of art, getting to the core of your decision. And opposite Jebera is Yesod, represented by Jupiter, abundance, benevolence, kindness, spirituality. And in the middle here, there is an invisible sphere called Dath, which crosses over the abyss, the place where the ego has to dissolve in order to attain that higher light, that higher form of consciousness. From Yesod, we have Baina. Baina is represented by Saturn. Saturn is the planet of limitation, containment, death and decay, where there's death, there's life. Also structure and composition and discipline. And from there, we have Chokma or Hokma, which is represented by the entire zodiac. It's wisdom and its opposite is understanding. So wisdom and understanding at the top. And then we have the Keter, Keter, the all mind. The first world is called the world of Isaiah, the physical world. The next one is called Yitzira, mind and intellect. The next one is called Bria, water, the soulful world. And at the top, Azulat, the fire aspect of our template the creative force of light. Now when I got into the Kabbalah or the tree of life it first appeared to me in a dream state when I was a child and walking past a bookstore one day I came across this book which saw which showed me the symbol that I was dreaming in my dream world and explains the pathways and how the life Tree of Life talks to you and can explain hidden depths within your within your soul. Um, the Tree of Life started teaching me about duality and the intrinsic nature of the Trinity in all things, and so it pushed me towards writing a book on the subject. And so, um, to me, the meaning of duality can be found within the tree of life. For example, um, here we have, if you can see, love and hate example. The dual line of love and the dual line of hate. And the meaning of the dual line of love and hate is care. We hate because we care and we love because we care. That is the connection, the polarity. But there are extremes of these polarities. For example, the extreme of love would be aloofness and possessiveness. The extremes of hate would be malice and resentment. Those things that are outside the dual line of creation of art, basically. Another example of duality would be the one of good and evil. 
the dual line of indifference. The tree of life and the law of correspondence is very much illustrated here in this template of life. From the all mind at the top to the most physical form of consciousness here in Malkuth at the bottom. The tree of life offers polarity and the understanding of duality within its structure and composition. Here on the left side we have the pillar of severity and here on the right side we have the pillar of mercy. understanding and wisdom and the middle middle pillar which we exercise in the middle pillar exercise is where we align the left and right sides of our being since we live in an all-mind universe the principle of correspondence and polarity can be found on the tree of life. The as above, so below. But somewhere along the line, our image, or our perfect image of the divine, got somehow shattered here in the 3D land, down where consciousness got more dense. And so through magic, we are the separate our elements in order to find where the fracturing is and so heal it and recover ourselves so we can walk the paths to each sphere and become that ultimate image, that ultimate art of divinity within yourself. Severity, mercy, strength, wisdom. Art. The spheres on the tree of life are connected by pathways, 22 pathways, illustrated by the 22 cards of the major arcana in the tarot deck. Each pathway is a journey to revealing what each sephira has to offer. The seven planetary sephira are ruled by archangels, the Elohim. And so in contacting planetary influences and information, we contact the certain sphere or planet you wish to tap into to represent what need you have, or what need you need to explore.
Thanks for watching and for digesting a very large fractal subject. We will be back soon with further encounters of the magical series. Next up is altar construction and then we will start invoking the four powers of the earth. Ah.